Hey guys, it's Gawain, and today we're going to be covering my favourite defence operator, Castle. Castle is a two-speed, two-armour defence operator and is one-off, if not the most, misunderstood and underrated operators in Rainbow Six Siege. Castle has the ability to funnel attackers into choke points and absorb explosive utility alongside soft destruction to get really, really creative and mix some interesting strategies. Castle can be a really big nuisance to the attackers in the right hands. Let's find out why. Castle is equipped with his Not Today Bitch Barricade, of which he has four to play with. These barricades are bulletproof versions of the green wooden ones every defender has access to by default. You can deploy these on any doorway or window you can put a regular barricade on. Each bulletproof door blocker can be destroyed by any explosive, which is exactly what you want, because wasting the attacker's utility is one of the main jobs Castle takes on. They can be destroyed by many other things too, but I will be covering them in the counters segment. I personally use my Not Today Bitch Barricades to funnel the attackers into certain areas where me and my team can set up by holding angles or placing traps. This makes it so attackers that are walking into sight get deleted faster than my teammates insta lock Amaru and take the diffuser. Furthermore, if the attackers wish to go away you have blocked off, then they have to use something, whether it's an explosive, a resource like Sledge's Hammer, or just taking the time to melee or go around, you are wasting something of theirs. This is massive. Wasting time and resources on Castle is so easy, and I've won rounds because of my big brain barricade placements. A common mistake I see with Castle players is using their door sealers to block off all the entrances to site. Sure, block off one so you don't have to worry about that angle or to prevent a rush, but don't block off absolutely every entrance because your roamers won't be able to get back onto site, potentially losing you that round. Use your armour panels to block off doors that aren't leading directly to sight, but will still hinder the attacker's ability to get there. Furthermore, create sight lines using your secondary shotgun, more on that later. Or, get your teammates to use their shotguns to create sight lines next to your bulletproof boys, so when attackers get stuck in that room or corridor due to your gadgets, then you can shoot them like fish in a barrel. Funneling attackers into an area where your teammates have footholds to see through and shoot through a soft wall is extremely effective and I advise you to start doing it more. Finally, Castle's UTP-1 Universal Tactical Panels can be used to block sightlines through windows or long corridors. This will allow easy rotates or extra angles to peek from without being shot in the back. Additionally, you can use your barricades to isolate a room above or below a site, so you can use your pocket shotgun to create holes and play vertically. Just know when to get back onto site. Castle's primary weapon options are the UMP45 SMG and the M1014 shotgun. His secondary weapons are the Super Shorty Pocket Shotgun and the 5.7 USG handgun. Before telling you what I use and recommend, I'm just going to go out and say that both of Castle's primary weapons are terrible. God awful. Like, below the lowest tier of bad. The UMP-45 has a slow fire rate and low damage per shot, and the M1014 shotgun is one of, if not the worst shotgun in the game. Personally, I use the UMP-45 as it comes with a 1.5x scope and that's my favourite sight. I also like the fact that I can take longer range gunfights because of this scope and the low recoil on the gun. It pairs well with my funnel and sightline strat as I explained earlier. I also have black ice on the gun so it gives me an incentive to use the SMG over the shotgun. The M1014 is a semi-automatic shotgun, so you can spam it basically. And you're gonna have to because this thing does like no damage outside point blank it feels like. If you can make the shotgun work, then go for it but I much prefer my Black Ice Ump. In terms of secondary weapons, I use the Super Shorty to create those sightlines and footholds I spoke about earlier. Having a secondary shotgun allows you to get even more creative with your strategies. Blocking off doorways or windows and then getting sightlines into the area you blocked off is massive, and it's what draws me to Castle. The ability to interact with the Siege Sandbox to the max and get really creative is what I love about Castle, and this secondary shotgun enables that without having to sacrifice my ranged weapon. However, this thing does not get kills easily either. It has three rounds before it has to reload and doesn't do all that much damage. But it's very funny when you get a kill with it. The 5.7 USG is a handgun that I talked about in my Zero video, but on Castle you can take the suppressor off so feel free to do so. 
I don't like using this gun over the super shorty because of the reasons I was gushing about before, but if you prefer having a pistol over a secondary shotgun, then go for it. This one has minimal recoil, a decent mag size, and okay damage per bullet, for a secondary weapon that is. For secondary gadgets, Castle has access to one bulletproof camera or two proximity alarms, both of which complement Castle's kit quite well. I personally use both. It just depends on what site or strategy I'm going for. Most of the time I will go for the bulletproof cam though, because having five pieces of bulletproof utility on one operator is kind of ridiculous. Place your camera at the end of long sight lines so enemies can't come and melee it or shoot it out from the side. This can be placed in your funnel so you can sit in a corner watching the cam and see when to peek or swing your sight lines. However, if you aren't a fan of using cameras and prefer to work off audio cues, then go for the proximity alarms. Place them in hard to see spots to distract the attackers whilst they try to find the beep boop so you can shoot them in the back. They will also alert you where the attackers are pushing from for free. It's purely situational and personal preference for these gadgets, so use what you see fits the situation best. During the preparation phase, Castle should prioritise setting his barricades down and making the funnels and sightlines I've been talking about through this video. If a teammate doesn't like your barricade placement and takes it down because they want to play in that area that you've blocked off, then don't block them in. That's just going to result in arguments and your teammate eventually dying. However, if they tear down a barricade just to throw a piece of utility into the room you've blocked off and they don't play in it, then put it back up and if they tear it down again, find another spot to put your armor panel. Once you have set all of your not today bitch barricades down, created sightlines and dealt with that one annoying teammate that won't stop tearing down every single one of your barricades, then reinforce some things if you have time. If not, then just get into position ready for the action phase. Castle's playstyle in the action phase can both be passive and aggressive, because once your gadget is down, that's it. You've done your job and hindered the attackers, so it doesn't matter if you die early as much as it would if, say, a smoke died early. I advise you to play around your barricades by using your sightlines as aforementioned, but don't be afraid to go on a flank or roam because that can be just as effective. Shooting enemies in the back whilst they try to break your bulletproof boys is a moment of superiority for the castle player. My action phases normally play out like this. I hold angles, maybe shoot an enemy through a sightline I made, I get into a tight spot because my positioning sucks, I pop a hatch with my super shorty and go on a flank, maybe picking up a kill or two. Knowing what map control you have and what enemies are trying to get makes it super easy to pick up kills on unsuspecting enemies. Contrary to popular belief, explosives are not a castle counter because that is his job, to waste attacker explosives. However, certain operators can destroy your armor panels without taking as much of a hit to their resource pool. The primary example of this is Sledge. Sure, his hammer does have a resource bar, but I've literally never seen a Sledge break their hammer, so it really doesn't matter. The only thing you can do to prevent Sledge breaking your 300 IQ barricades is making the sight lines I keep banging on about and shooting him before he can get in melee range of your gadget. This also works with any attacker trying to melee your bulletproof boys, because they take 9 punches each to destroy, which wastes a lot of time, but it also leaves them vulnerable to your bullets. Maverick is also a counter to Mr. Map Control, but not as much as Sledge because Maverick's resources run out a lot faster than Sledge's do. This being said, a coordinated team will be able to use Maverick to the fullest and have enough fuel to do his job and clear castle barricades. The way to play around Mav is the same as Sledge and people trying to melee the Not Today Bitch barricades, shoot him before he gets to the window or door blocker. Furthermore, Maverick needs to create a big hole in your barricade to destroy it, so you have the potential to shoot him before he can fully destroy it. Other than Maverick and Sledge, Castle doesn't really have any counters. Do not block off all the entryways into sight because that will just hinder your own team. Place your Not Today Bitch barricades outside of sight to hold map control for longer. Use the super shorty to make sight lines in combination with your primary gadget to make it super difficult to push as an attacker. Block off certain windows so you and your team can rotate in and around sight without having to worry about peaking more angles than you need to. 
Use the UMP-45's 1.5x scope to take longer range gunfights that you force attackers into with your funnel. Play smart, be creative. The best castles know what areas of the map are crucial to the attackers, so block them off and hold them the best you can. Make sure you have a way out though. And feel free to go on a flank or even roam if you get caught in a bad position, but can rotate out of it. Overall, Castle is a middle of the road operator in terms of difficulty in my opinion. His gadget is straightforward in terms of its use, but placing it in good positions that hinder the enemy but not your team brings up the skill floor a bit. Also, his guns can be quite difficult to use in terms of damage, but you'll get the hang of them fairly quickly, even if they are pea shooters. Learn where to place your armor panels to hold map control and funnel enemies into choke points for easy kills, and you are sure to become a pretty decent castle player. Thank you all for watching this video. All the clips you saw in this video were from my Twitch channel, link will be on screen and in the description right now. Callie's next for this series, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye. An air drop. That's the air drop trigger. Nope, there's one here too. I went flying, dude. <laughs>